Hiya, it's Amanda here from Lolly Lulu Crafts and today we are going to be making my dad's Christmas present. <gasps> Shh, no telling. You might be thinking, well, that's a really nice Christmas present you've got him there, a round circle of wood. But obviously, we're going to be making it really cool, hopefully. Fingers crossed, this is way, way, way out of my comfort zone. So, what I've got here clearly is a round circle piece of wood, but it also has another little round circle in the middle, which is a bit of a clue, as well as these hands here. We're going to be making a clock. I can't say it very much louder because he's in the house. So i got to be quiet when I say that. So the first thing I need to do is gesso this. This will just prep this for paint, etc. Now, it comes with like a darker edge but we're going to do something to that as well but I noticed on one side here there was just a couple of little bumps so we're going to make that our wrong side and we're going to make this our right side now a couple of things just to note is you want to remember that the bit where the hands go round you want not to have anything massively high now I'm not going for massive height anyway I I, th I know that he would prefer a more simple look so we're going for vintage anyway, now yeah. we've got here the gesso so this is just to prep the wood area ready for any paint etc that you're going to put on top so we are going to go with this white and I've just got a kilner jar here that I'm putting in the sponge applicators and then I'm just going to literally take the gesso and apply so we've painted that up now so we're just going to give that some a few minutes to dry okay so here's my piece of paper that i want to use or the image that i want to use on my clock i can talk louder now and say that word clock clock because he's out <laughs> sounds like pop pop doesn't it for the car anyway super excited because i can now talk to you without worrying for a little bit anyway so what i want to do is kind of make that rough and ready around the sides here here and perhaps a little bit down the bottom here and I probably won't actually I'll probably leave that bit but just around here and if you pull towards you you right you get like a whiter edge there I don't think it really matters in this case because I'm not uh planning on that particularly showing I just wanted it not to be like a perfect edge okay so that's that bit um I think these bits are going to come off the side and we may use that in the top half but I've also got this piece here which will probably need to go on first but, and I may need to rip at that as well okay so the thing we want to work out is where this is going to go and sort of the right sort of location now I want it so that the centre hole if possible is kind of coming into the white I'm not going to really go much further than that so we're going to lose sort of that amount and I think that's going to be about as good as we're going to get on so then what I want is this piece of paper here so like that would be sort of there and then we'll soften that all down I'm thinking something like that might look quite cool okay so now we need to start sticking things down so I've got here Mod Podge paper matte water-based sealer glue and finish I love Mod Podge okay so we are going to move this out of the way I think we can rip half of that off at least and then that's gonna go like that and then that will be like so, so that's going to be like so. Okay, but basically that piece is there. So that's the bit we need to worry about right now. So let's take my small spongy thing. Just put a layer of this on. You don't want it massively thick, but you don't want it stupid thin either. And then we're going to put that like so so then we better do the car next because that's the next layer and I want it to just 
touch this edge which it's not quite doing I think what I'll do is I'll put a layer of the Mod Podge down and that will give me some movement and don't worry about it going over the edge of the previous layer we're going to be coating over it anyway there we go not too thick not too thin and then we're going to take our little car here So we want it over as far as we can, the straight is just trying to get the best position for this so that we've got it, there you go, I think that's what I want, just a teeny bit down there. I think that's it, because we can straighten that by where we put the hands anyway. But um, I think it kind of needs to be like that really okay and then the final piece is this little fella here so I'm just going to grab again the Mod Podge I can't see where the edge of the thing is now so I'm just slapping it on okay oops and then I'm just going to move that over I want that. So where's the edge of that thing? Okay. So that's that last piece done. So now we're just going to put a little layer of this over the whole lot. And then when this is dried enough, we'll go around and get rid of it all around the edges. And Okay, so we need to leave that to dry for a little bit. And then we'll come back in a minute. Okay, so I've let that dry for a while. I think it's been about half an hour, maybe an hour. So now what I want to do is... It's tiny bit tacky but then it will do until you put sort of put like a finishing glaze on it so what I want to do now is just cut around let's take this out of the way so we don't cut through that just cut around the edge to get the excess off I don't need to be perfect because we want it kind of rough and ready but what I like to do is sort of come away and then sort of cut a bit off and cut it away So like here we can now come across like so and get that piece away and out the way. Then the next thing I just want to do beforehand if I can is just go into the centre here. Okay so that's not too bad I think. Okay let's see what we think. Oh yeah now I am pleased with that. Phew that's a good thing. So what I want to do is got some sandpaper and I'm just gonna take one piece here first of all and I'm gonna roll it into like a little pencil okay and then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna pop it in here and I'm just gonna sandpaper just in that hole, just twisting that around a little bit. So I've just Sam did that a little bit. Obviously it's just ripped away a little there, but it's not going to be a problem because that is going to be covered up by the mechanism of our cl clock. He's back, we have to whisper it. <laughs> um, so that's all good. And then, but I can't do any more because it will spoil it. And then I'm just going to take this it's still a little bit damp, so I'm just being a bit cautious, but I just want to go around, just doing this downwards like so, just to take any excess off. So you can see just the edges here, I'm not doing that massive um, amount, I'm just trying to take any paper that's hanging over off. And just slightly give it a, a vintage -y feel. I 
So just need to be careful, look, just ripped a bit of the paper there. Now that's fine, I like it, but if I go any further it's going to go into the car and I don't want to do that. Okay, and I'm really liking how that's looking, I think that's coming up really well. Now, I've also got here a little nail file, so you could go round with that if you want to just smooth it a bit more. Because that, that was quite a rough one. This will then go over that and just smooth any pieces off that we've sort of started to lift and pull. It's just like you would always go down a grade as you're doing something like this. You would always go from a rougher grade to a smoother one. And that feels lovely and smooth now. And then take this and we're going to do another coat of the same Mod Podge. So do you remember I said if you kind of pop the glue into the center there that will just give it a nice smoother finish. So I'm going to leave this one now to dry. I'll do another couple of coats of this Mod Podge and then I'm going to leave it overnight and then I will come back to you tomorrow and we can then move on to the next stage. Hiya, I'm back again and I did a couple more coats. This is the next morning. I did a couple more coats of uh, Mod Podge and it's come up really nice. It's nice and dry. You can still feel like a slight tackiness. A bit. And that's because it's not sealed yet. Um, so when we put our final top coat on, not of that particular bottle but a different bottle then that should seal it in nicely and as you can see there's some extra bits here these are actually stamps I've got them on the stamp um, and I put these are stamping up stamps it is gorgeous grunge and I basically I put the backing on these I wasn't going to I haven't on most of them but I found with Doing this particularly, I feel it would be a lot easier to see the position of them. Okay, so I'm going to be stamping now, then I'm going to be doing the numbers, and then we're going to let that dry, and I'll come back to it in a bit. So let's do this part first. Okay, so I've moved that over, so now let's start with this one at the bottom. I thought these stripes might look quite fun underneath that because I'm not going to say what because just in case it can be heard but you can see what um, I just thought it might almost give it like a grounded effect so I'm going to use my chocolate chip for that so I'm just going to ink that up and I'm just going to practice it off onto the side anyway just to make sure I'm happy I'm going to do that right down there oh yeah that's really delicate actually so yeah I'm happy with that I don't know. so that's nice and delicate I'm pleased with that I don't know if you can even see it. Let me lift it up. I don't want it overpowering. I just want a little bit going on. So I think that works for me. You see, I think that's going to work better because we can get away with it in a paler colour. So that doesn't work, but that colour works perfectly, but it's too strong for there. So this is why it's always worth having a little go first, making sure I'm going over where it's brown. And then... Just move that over and pop that down. I'll oh, just do it. <laughs> there, that looks much better, doesn't it? I think than what it would have done. So I think the occasion will work really well in that colour or in that position over there. I'm just going to put that one there because I might need it again. And I'm going to do it like that so I know what I'm doing. And then I'm going to get my occasion, so we know we don't want to stamp off, but I do want to just test it and see how I like it. Mm. Interesting, bit, a bit of a blob down the side there where I'd over inked it, so we just need to be careful inking this one, or rather stamping it, because it's actually when I stamped it, it rocked, and therefore it... Okay, so we'll just test that one again. I'm just going to lightly ink it. Oh, much better. Okay, so just not a hard press with this one. And then... Hmm, I'm just wondering if it looked really cool going into the corner there, actually. We could have the number there, but if we put it just... 
There we go. Let's lift that so you can just see. It's kind of cool, isn't it? The last one that I've placed, I mean, I think I may do some more, we'll see. I don't want to over egg it. Um, I don't want to do the Cajun, I don't think I want to do the brown. I like it um, stamped off like that. I think it works with that colour. There you go. And it's got a slight little hole in the middle of the dot, which is kind of cool because of the way that the um, it's bumpy. I think it'd be nice to put a little bit of the Cajun down here somewhere just to and to be honest I don't really think I want to do any more I think that's enough with that I think that's plenty okay I wasn't happy with that area there where I'd put that so I actually wiped it off with wet cloth I just checked it and it was still wet enough for me to wipe off and I also wasn't entirely happy with that blob of Cajun down there so I wiped that off as well when I wiped off here the only bit it left a tiny bit of the red Cajun there which actually I liked and then I added just a tiny bit of the dots of the larger dots that we put there in the um I can't think what colour it was, it's brown anyway, uh, chocolate chip. So it's going to take a while for that to dry, but while that is drying, what I'm going to be doing as well to allow that to dry is put the numbers on. So I need to mix up my texture paste. I've got here some clear. You can buy it in colours, I just don't have the colours. I think if I'd had like a brown or something that would have been really cool. But it's clear, so I think I'll mix it with some paint and that should work as long as I don't go bananas. So let's get that mixed up and clean my hands up because as always with ink I always get myself covered. I do not know why. It doesn't matter what ink pad it is, I get covered in ink. Which is why I like die cutting because it's not messy. Look, I don't get like this when I do die cutting. My Cricut does not make my hands this colour. Anyway, I'm going to go and clean up. See you in a minute. Okay, so I've got a couple of paints. I've got pomegranate and burnt umber. This is the Artiste Do Crafts Artiste range. And I've got my Cosmic Shimmer Texture Paste. So we're just going to put this down on here and just give it a bit of a mix up and see what we can do. Now this texture paste, as said, comes out clear when it's dry, but it looks white here. So what I'm going to do is mix my colour first because it won't look right. until you know if I mix in the texture paste because it will be whitening it up I want a bit more red in that it's the slightly wrong I need to add a different color to that Okay, so I've got my colour mixed up, so as I said we've got the burnt umber and the pomegranate and then I just added some black in just to give it a little bit more depth. So that, okay, and then I'm going to get my texture paste, I'm going to add a clump of that in and that will lighten this, it will appear to anyway, it will go clear once it's dry, I'm just hoping that the paint will dry enough. <laughs> add some more texture. I've done miles too much paint here I should have uh, cut that down but anyway not to worry so if you're doing it you probably don't need to do as much as I've done here because this is enough for about 20. Okay so that's that all mixed up you want to make sure it's really nicely so sort of scrape it along the bottom so that you really mix that in make sure the colours really evenly through. Now I have to say I've never done it with paint so I'm taking a bit of a risk here but I'm assuming since the paint will set and texture paste sets I'm assuming that you know it should work together. Okay, so now we need to mark up 
the positions of our 12, 6, 3 and 9 and obviously it's really important to get these accurate because otherwise it's not going to be telling the correct time. So what I've done is I've put the whole of my base here so that there's a cross in the middle of my line so I'm using my board here and I've lined up the 12 o'clock position I'm saying quietly so that it's where I need it to be because of the picture that we've got here I mean if you're doing a more random picture you might not need to be so precise as to where that starts you still need to be precise about the angles so then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to line it up with the I'm going to be careful because obviously my ink is still slightly wet but I'm lining it up with this piece here that's going vertical then I'm making sure the top and the bottom also line up with that line and then I'm just going to very lightly put a mark with pencil. So it's a very light mark. So that protractor is then in the right position. So very carefully I'm lifting that up and I'm lining my ruler up with the bottom line on the protractor. Not the bottom of the protractor, but the bottom line. And then I'm marking... points at the side there so now we know we've got perfect right angles okay so then we know we can position our four points without any worries okay you could have done it I think quite reasonably using this grid because I think I would have probably ended up with the same result by using that center point and then the two sides the same but I just wanted to be 100% sure so if you don't have a protractor but you've got one of these you could still make it work all right so then we want that like so making sure I'm happy with how that's lined up so the I can see the pencil mark so I'm happy that it's not overlapping that crease as well it's straight it's evenly over both sides so let's just okay I think that's okay and very carefully lift that up Whew. one done three more to go okay let me show you I think that is pretty good I'm pleased with that okay and if you've got any untidy pieces you can just get my craft knife and then just very carefully taking that and just scraping along just very lightly just to tidy any edges up that you're not happy with okay so now what we want to do the six which is just down here so we want to make sure it's about the same distance from the edge and it's about there I would say and that's lined up correctly I'm being very careful because the ink's still wet there as well and then I'm just getting my paste now here I need to be cautious because there's other numbers and things nearby so we don't want to accidentally go through those holes there we go. I, I didn't want it like really evenly smooth as well I wanted it to look kind of slightly blobby through the holes there you go doesn't that look cool I really like that actually I have to say okay so now we're going to do the three and the nine there we go So now obviously I need this to dry completely. I can't do anything with this now. Okay, so it is now a day and a bit later because I just didn't get around to doing anything on this yesterday. But I did do the back actually with some gesso um, because I want to paint the back up. Um, so I thought that would be nice. I think we'll do that in a minute. But what I want to do as well is show you how this turned out I was really pleased it's completely dry the stamping and this has dried and look I'm hoping you can catch the 
Let me see all the texture on that from the texture paste and the paint has really done that and I wasn't really sure to be honest whether it would set so I am dead 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 chuffed that it has so I'm really pleased with how that looks look how that's coming out okay so I've got this acrylic paint it's just do crafts and I've got it in sand And that's a really nice colour look. Let me put that with that look. That's just sort of blends in nicely. Now I really don't want to have to do more than one coat. So there we go. So that looks alright I reckon. So I'm going to put that to one side and let that dry and then I'll come back to you in a minute. Okay, so this is all dried now. It only took about a three quarters of an hour to, an, yeah, probably about three quarters of an hour. It's quite quite quick. So the back is now sort of nicely, reasonably neat and tidy. So now we want to do this edge. And I've got here some gold, or oh well, some foiling flakes. Gilding flakes, that's the proper word, isn't it? I'm probably going to go with that one. And it's called, I don't know, just like a gold anyway. Gold mix, I think. Okay, so I've got here some flitter glue and a sponge. And then I'm just going to gently, so just taking my flakes and then just grabbing some. And the last bit. Okay, so I need to just balance this somewhere for a minute while I clear up. Okay, so I'm just going to let that dry now. There's little bits that have gone over onto the actual front. I think when I start the, the next stage of with the foiling, it will, that will go off. What I did do is I just ran around the edge with my thing like this I just twirled it around like a cake <laughs> and just went round and made sure that all that foil was really well pushed into the glue so that we have a really nice edge there so that once that's dry and we go back in with our little sponge that should take off all the excess leave a beautiful edge to it and we should have most of that off here but a little bit I think will look quite nice and give it a bit more vintage feel. Okay so I've let that dry for a little bit so now I'm just going to take this little texture sponge and the first thing I want to do is just go around on the bits that aren't actually I'm going to use the cloth for that I was going to say that aren't where I want them to be but I'm going to use the cloth so that it wipes it away stuck to the thing because that seems to work better when you use the sponge it kind of rubs it in oops okay I think that's the worst of it done at the moment so um, now I want to move my little pot and get my little sponge and just start rubbing away
Okie dokie, so that's the front done there and that's our foiling all around the edge. And you see now just by giving it a clean up that looks much better. So all I want to do now is get rid of this and I'm just going to repaint the back. Okay, so I'm just taking the sand paint and just carefully round these edges because we don't want to end up putting paint on our lovely foiling. But this will just finish this off. I thought it would be easier doing it the other way around, but actually in hindsight I should have painted this last, but or you know, after the foiling. There we go. So that looks nice and tidy again now. Okay, so the back is now dry and looks a heck of a lot better than it did. So now we are on the final stages and I've got my Mod Podge Crackle Medium. Okay, so let's, let's get going. Oh gosh. <laughs> so One Direction, oh no, please, no. Nobody starts singing One Direction songs, okay? That wasn't what I meant. I meant you have to apply it in One Direction. Okay, it says avoid overbrushing. I'm not entirely sure that I'm avoiding overbrushing here, but anyway. Okay, so it's been overnight again, and the front has dried. I will show you that in a minute, um, but I did need to repaint the back um, where I'd done the side here. It had gone a bit yucky so I did it again so I think that's the third time I think I think actually it's quite good because it is building up the layers and so it's coming to a really nice color I as you know glazed the front with my crackle glaze and I'll show you in a minute but it didn't actually crack and I did a couple of test pieces as well and both occasions it didn't crack but I don't really mind. I think it's come out really nicely anyway, and I like it. So what I then did was I took the Walnut Stain Distress Ink, and I blobbed it down onto this mat here, so I created like a pool of colour. The first time I took my cloth, my rather scruffy cloth, and I just sort of put my finger inside like that and just picked up some ink so it was wet, and, it, and I then rubbed around the edge, took a dry piece and I wiped it so that the centre stayed nice and clean. Um, you can just see now it's just got that little sort of slight kind of grubby <laughs> kind of look and I also went along, can you see here, I went along that line and a little bit on here although it didn't really pick up but it's still got that whiteness so I think it probably picked up on some bits which emphasizes this white area and you can definitely see it on here so, and you can see obviously around the edges so really this is now complete other than obviously the mechanism so we've got this with that gold brass washer there and then that on top and then popping it in through that hole so brass washer then the rubber washer I'm wondering if the rubber one is there something to do with stopping the kind of battery affecting it somehow like a conductory thing I don't know or maybe it's just because it's soft <laughs> so want it to be there's the 12 o'clock so we want it like so okay and then on the front is the little nut and I guess this is holding it in position mm. so what we're doing is tightening it up so I want to make sure that the 12 o'clock, yep that's still good. So I think that's probably tight enough, I don't want to like completely wreck it. So who would think having done 
all of this that is completely out of my comfort zone that putting on the hands would have been the most difficult part do you know what I think the problem was and absolutely believe the other clock that I had and I can talk normally now because it's out it they had protected it they had protected the hands they had put the hands in there with the cardboard there and stuck it onto the back of the clock so they were completely straight and flat the actual mechanism was through there so that was all protected this just came wrapped in a bit of bubble wrap and the hands were in a bit of bubble wrap and they were already bending before I got them so I was trying to straighten them and of course the more I did it the more it bent and then eventually ding and the problem was is this hole didn't really fit as good as I would have liked and it didn't come with the second hand and the second hand has got that lovely little centerpiece which covers that up so I'm not entirely sure it was really how it was supposed to be anyway so luckily I did have the second one and so I've put those hands on and I'm not unhappy with them actually um, I thought I wasn't sure but they've definitely gone on a hundred times better you saw this then it just clicks on it was so easy um, and then to finish off and of course the point is sorry by the way is that you're clicking it on to different parts of the mechanism and each part presumably is run by a different part of the clock mechanism in the back which is why you need to make sure it's on the right section and this is the problem I was having and why I was having to try and shove that other one down was because it wasn't going on the right section so it wouldn't have moved around so then to finish off I'm just popping on the little second hand which then has that gorgeous little brass centerpiece and what I think I am pleased about with this I just need to lift it just a wee bit because otherwise it's going to catch on the others don't want to break that as well though what you want to make sure is just that it's sort of flat but not touching and catching the rest so that's good but what actually I'm finding if I just move those out of the way is that with that second hand it's actually making it look okay because I was thinking oh god it looks a bit tiny but I can always change the hands later but I actually quite like it because it's not then covering up loads of the clock and stuff I think it probably did look better with the slightly bigger ones but I don't know maybe a more delicate look is nicer I'm happy with it whichever so that's good so now all I want to do is put a battery in the back and just make sure that it's working how it should do so I'm just going to go and get that make sure it's all tick tick tickly boo <laughs> sorry couldn't resist back in a minute okay so I've put the battery in and can you hear something that's a good sign what I also notice is this still twists a little bit so if it's not perfectly straight lined up with the 12 o'clock we can still change it but look it works <laughs> I'm so excited <gasps> sorry calm calm so let's uh what time is it what time is it oh I don't know what the time is 12 20 so that would be 12 o'clock roughly and that would be kind of 20 wouldn't it there you go Oh, I'm so so excited this is so completely out of my comfort zone and it has worked and I'm so pleased with it I hope you like it as much as I do and more importantly I hope my dad likes it now I know my dad will like it because he'd like it even if it's a big bunch of rubbish frankly because I made it but obviously I think it isn't a big bunch of rubbish I think it looks absolutely incredible I'm so excited and do you know what I think it's a blessing because looking through the camera which gives you almost a better bird's eye view because it's a little screen you can kind of see it all in one go I think those little ones look better than the big ones I think they're a little bit more delicate a little bit more allowing for the rest of it and I really love the little second hand going around now obviously what I will do is take the battery out I won't leave it ticking inside um but i'm so chuffed with it i hope you like it too i really really do i'd love to hear your comments on what you think on me doing something a bit different like this and whether you want to see more now there is another project that i am in the middle of doing for my dad another thing so that will be coming up as well i think this one will go up first so you'll have that but let me know do you want to see more things like this do you like it is it something that you want me to do 
leave your comments and please leave your comments on what you think of it now clearly you'll be watching this after christmas so i hope you've had a fabulous christmas and new year and um, by this time my dad will have seen it and um so i'll probably be writing in the blog post that goes with this a little bit more information about you know i'll tell you what you thought well, I know what he thinks, because he's going to love it anyway, isn't he? But you know what I mean. Anyway, so that's a really good link to say, take a peek at the blog post. If you're on YouTube, go to the link below and it will take you to the blog post. And I'll put as much information on there as I can for you. All right, my lovely. So I hope you've enjoyed my lovely little lolliettes. And I will see you again soon. And in case you hadn't realised, I am super excited. All right, thanks so much for watching. Bye. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. <laughs> Bye. Kissing in the rain, walking on the beach. I can see it now, almost happening. Sneaking out at night, living like we're free You and I could do anything we please You've got the face to fit the frame